You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. to be an addict now he's substance free telling all about his crazy journey take off that mask and take on your addiction alan charles author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention and the host of the alan charles show is here to bring hope to the hopeless as he shares his unbelievable luck at surviving a 24-year drug addiction Alan's raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. So now, please welcome the host of The Alan Charles Show, Alan Charles. He's given us the real story, The Alan Charles Show. Ups and downs, losing jobs and the glory, The Alan Charles Show. He helps others avoid that purgatory. The Alan Charles Show. Good evening and welcome. This is indeed the Alan Charles Show coming to you from New York City, live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I am your host, Alan Charles, and coming to you live in New York City on a chilly 30, 30 degree night in the city. I uh, hope it is nice where you are this evening, or at least you're up in front of a radio or your computer and uh, and get ready for our show. You're in the right place. You're tuned into the No Stigma Zone, and this is where we talk about addiction, recovery, and reality every Thursday night, and I give it to you straight. Um, and the reason... Why I give it to you straight, it's not that I learned all this stuff from 24-year addiction, and I tell you exactly what it feels like, what goes on underneath, and a lot of these things that I'll share, it's a lot of my own thoughts, some of the stuff I've picked up along the way at rehabs and from professionals and things like that, but I always talk about my own experience, and I'm here to give it to you so that you do not have to go through the damage and the embarrassment and the shame and all the other things that I went through. I'm here to tell you that that is real and that there are ways to avoid it and you can get your life back. So just sit back, relax. You are in the right place. Tonight, we have a special guest. Uh, my guest will be Brandy Winans. Now, Brandy is the wife of NFL player Jeff Winans, who played, I've got to check this out with her because I've gotten different information from all the different places that I checked, but uh, I, I, I had spoke with her earlier, but I didn't tell her I was a big Bills fan growing up, so I, I knew who Jeff obviously was. So the Bills, and then they mentioned the Saints, and then I know the Raiders and the Buccaneers, so we'll get that all straightened out. And she's the author of a book called The Flip Side of glory and it just is an incredible revealing book i'm about halfway through i just got it and um it shows you a different side of professional football and what goes on behind the scenes and you know we'll talk about concussions and cta and we'll get behind all the real stories of what went on so we'll bring brandy in in just a little bit uh let's tell you a little bit about how i got here after a 24 year addiction to cocaine where I died in a car accident uh, numerous overdoses hospital appearances 
I should not be here, but I was fortunate enough to finally find recovery. And after, I guess, I started to get trust back and started to get my life back about working a program, uh, I was sober for five years, and I've had a pretty adventurous life. I played professional baseball. Uh, I was, and I still am, a professional harness racing driver. And, of course, I've had all the lows with addiction. And uh, somebody suggested I write a book, which I did. And the book is called Walking Out the Other Side, an Addict's Journey from Loneliness to Life. And from there, I was surprised, but people started to ask me to speak around the country. And I started going to businesses and schools and organizations and anybody that uh, wanted to hear about the dangers of drugs and alcohol. And from there, I followed through with a bunch of social media and then Bold Brave Media found me and thus we have our radio show. So that's that's how I got here. Now, usually... After I, I share this with you, I usually do the news, and I'll say, Engineer Sean, which, you know what, Engineer Sean, let's go to the news, you can put the music on, but what we're going to do is, we're going to welcome in our guests, because these two news stories that I spoke about last week, ironically, fit into my guest's story, and um, first of all, let me welcome in Brandy Winans. Brandy, are you here with us? I am, Alan. Uh, how are you? I am doing really well. Thank you so much for doing the show this evening. So, so welcome. So, this is I've never done the news with anybody, but I'm going to share. I had two stories last week that I did, and they're not the greatest stories as far as feeling wise. But the first one was. NFL's Vincent Jackson, uh, the autopsy showed he was suffering from chronic alcoholism. Um, you're probably familiar with Vincent. He was he, he was a buccaneer for a while, and just everything that I've read about him, that he was just this amazing, wonderful person that helped in the Tampa community. And um, one of the things they said was that he may have been suffering from CTE, and um uh, it was just a horrible thing to hear about. Uh, are you familiar with Jeff? I'm sorry to put you on the spot. I mean, not Jeff. Are you familiar with Vincent Jackson? I'm sorry to put you on the spot like that. Oh, um, it's been a really hard couple of weeks. Um, I was very familiar with Benson. He was a friend of mine. And okay. um, uh, we were thankfully able to get his brain up to um, Boston University through... Buddies up at uh, Concussion Legacy Foundation, Chris Nowinski, Lisa McHale here locally. Um, it was, it was. Um, I think our 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 city here in Tampa and Tampa Bay, and I'm over in a little island here in Tierra Verde. We're we're still in in shock. Um, I had met his parents a few years ago, and his dad was a former military, and we had done a thing with our mayor here in St. Pete to honor him and other. Uh, former military veterans, and then I'd had him speak at one of my NFL alumni uh, general meetings, his oh, dad, wow. and um, it was just ironic because he and I had been texting. I was, you know, we had Super Bowl here, and right, we were uh, also helping Roman Gabriel book uh, book his shows and his radios, his podcast, and um, Outsold TV, and uh, and then I was also part with Chris Visser, former ESPN analyst, who um, was helping to put on the Wounded Warrior amputee uh, breakfast here with um, our General McKenzie who came over from CENTCOM here in Tampa out of McGill. So right. I was to get him involved in so many different aspects. And he was, you know, we had did our Super Bowl of golf. He just, he was, he was just not advocable to to do that and you know i for the last few months there was just some some signs that uh were starting to appear at least with me and my gut and then i i had a text with him on january 20th and and i said well how is everything okay yeah, everything's well and uh the next thing i know you know he's he's dead a few days later so um very oh. very 
Well, listen, I'm sorry that we started out with that. I figured you you knew him and you can shed light. I didn't realize it was so close, but we're going to take a quick break and we will uh, straighten all this out. When we get back, you're listening to the Alan Charles Show live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Welcome back to the Alan Charles Show live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I'm your host, Alan Charles. And uh, before we went to break, we were kind of doing the news. And uh, we brought in early our guest for the evening, Brandy Winans. And she is the wife of Jeff Winans, who played in the NFL and uh, unfortunately was afflicted with a lot of injuries as well as CTE. And she wrote an amazing book called The Flip Side of Glory that details her experience of how wives and families of former players struggle to adapt to life after football. And we'll we'll cover all that as the night goes on. But uh, we were talking a little bit about the news and, and I brought up NFL's Vincent Jackson and uh, without realizing that uh, Brandy has a pretty close uh was pretty close to to Mr. Jackson. So go ahead, Brandy. Where were we when we left off? Um, we were just, I was reiterating what had happened, how devastating it was, not only for myself, but for our community and, and um, you know, his family. His father was a former military guy. Um, right. He, he's, he's married with four children, and they were having uh, difficulties, and he had moved in over with his parents and then basically disappeared. And then uh, they had actually put out a missing person report on him, and the police found him at, at the uh, ho- hotel where where he was found uh, dead. And nobody knew that he was there. And then when the police found him and they took away the missing person um, report that had come out, they, they dissolved that. And then two days later, he... The, the maid found him passed away, um, but uh, we had we had just text on the twentieth, and uh, I had said, you know, how is everything? And and he was like, oh, everything everything's well, everybody's doing well, you know. I had no idea he was in the hotel. Nobody, you know, it, it, he was he was keeping it very private, and right. um, just an amazing icon here. He he was um, he had Action Jackson eighty three found eighty foundation. He 
um, was very much involved in the military families here, helping them. He had opened like five different restaurants, and he had just remodeled one here in St. Pete and just opened a new one called The Cask in Tampa, uh, real estate development. He was just um, an icon here in the community. I think that's the most shocking thing. But, you know, when I wrote the book, The Flip Side of Glory, um, people don't know what goes on behind closed doors when the shoulder pads and the helmets come off and the family unit is lost in transition. And Benson, unfortunately, had, had developed um, an alcohol problem, alcoholism, and right. um, which was the reason that um, he and his wife split up at that time. And um, But, you know, like with my husband, who um, ended up with a prescription drug addiction after multiple injuries, um, we had no idea about the, the brain. The, the NFL never talked to us about the brain. It was only about right. parts of and, um so, you know, when, when you when you go through these kind of things, you're not thinking that it is um, something else going on with the brain. You know, I thought that it was physical disabilities and um, prescription drug addiction with my husband. Um, you know, here, what we have found because the brain races is that it's usually, um, it, it contributes to either drug abuse, uh, alcoholism, or, or the combination thereof. And, um, you know, my husband ended up passing away with stage 3 CTE, um, uh, which had been diagnosed. So forever. sorry. But, you know, the, the aftermath is that um, the education that's come out from it, because when you lose a loved one, and, and there's always, you always have to find some sort of positive out of it. Um, you have the beautiful memories, but you also, for me, it was, I was just relentless in learning as much as I could about the brain when he was alive and and then learning more about the brain afterwards, which is how I ended up um, with uh, being very involved with Concussion Legacy Foundation. Okay, well, that's we. I want to get to all of that. We're going to cover it. I just want to backtrack a little because I brought you in to talk about the news. So the first story obviously was personal to you. Well, as it turns out, the second story is going to be very personal personal to you also. And what it talks about is that the NFL is seeking information on cannabis as an alternative to opioids, and that's kind of been an ongoing thing. And as you mentioned about the opioids and that so many players have been addicted in and the article that I recently read. I mean, it, it talks about Brett Favre, Ryan Leaf, Calvin Johnson, Eugene Monroe, Jeff Hatch, Travis Kelsey. You know, you mentioned your husband in this vein. And then there was Ricky Williams, who briefly retired, and he was getting beat up, and he became an advocate for smoking marijuana or CBD. And, uh, you know, he tested pop CBD, and he tested positive so i guess that's something that you've already lived through too seeing how beat up some of the nfl players are after especially you know your husband was a big guy and he was on front line and you know every play he's getting a hit and these guys just get beat up and these medications and, and different things that they pump because they just want to get them back on the field. Can you shed a little light on that? I mean, you know, this is pretty interesting that they actually, it said that the NFL has finally loosened its cannabis testing policy last off season amid mounting public sentiment in favor of decriminalization in some states, full legalization for both medical and recreational purposes. So, you know, maybe you want to comment a little bit on that if you can it's about time (laughs) okay it's about time um you know when uh jeff and i separated first and then we got um we got ab got him got him cleaned out uh drug wise and then he got on a a called suboxone and um marijuana so he had a medical license out in california um, Florida here now you can get a medical license. Uh, most a lot of the states now are opening up to that uh, mm-hmm. opportunity. Um, this really does help. It helps mental problems. It helps to slow the brain down. Uh, you know, back in the day when my husband played from seventy three to eighty one, literally, 
go into the locker room and pretty much get what whatever line you wanted and get whatever you needed. Okay, and, Brandy, you know, Brandy, we just got to take a quick break, but we're going to continue right with that, so you don't want to miss this. You're listening to The Alan Charles Show live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick. Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy EasySense.com and learn how, with your help, we can fight these horrific brain disorders. That's EasySense.com to learn more and help support the Broderick Foundation. We are back live on the PBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and I am your host, Alan Charles, and you are listening to The Alan Charles Show. So tonight, our guest, Brandy Winans, uh, before we went to break, we were talking a little bit about legalization, or at least uh, looking the other way about cannabis um, for NFL player use and all the pains and uh different things that they go through and the injuries and using some of this stuff to take away the pain. And obviously with opioids being such a problem in the country and we've had our share of professional players that have been addicted. So now they're looking at cannabis. So Brandy, you were starting to tell us a little bit about your husband and playing and coming off the field uh, at halftime and he would have access to, you know, everybody I guess is hurting a little bit, but uh, why don't you pick up from there? Yeah, not just halftime, before before the game starts, you know, oh, they're okay. getting wrapped up, they've got their injuries, they, you know, uh, Toradol in one line, uh, opioids in another, Thank good, goodness now, um, and I, a lot of it I attribute to the media and, and us, you know, coming out about pensions and disabilities and drug abuse that, that they have really honed in on that. You don't see that in the locker rooms anymore today like you used to. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, pretty much you could get pretty much anything you wanted. Jeff had never had a drug until he got to the NFL. Wow. Um, yeah, even with all the, even the playing in college and, you know, he, he was at USC and that was one of the big time schools. Uh, I believe he even won a national championship there and there was, but he didn't see drugs until he got to the NFL. Marijuana was what, what they, what they did in central California. It was marijuana. Um, okay. and he had smoked pot, but pretty much nothing else. He'd never had a hard drug. Um, until, and then what happened was his first, his first major injury with Buffalo was a torn ACL. And what are they going to give you for pain? Of course, opioids. So that was his first, that was his first introduction. Yes. And, um, 
and he liked it a lot. <laughs> well, so, most of us unfortunately do, especially those of us that become addicts. We we uh, we have a fondness for that medication, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, and see, and and at first it works as the painkiller; it does its job. But then eventually, what ends up happening is if the pain can doesn't get better and you don't get whether it's surgery or rehab or what do you have or you have to do to get rid of the pain then all you're doing is minimizing pain all the time and that's where the strength starts to take its toll and now you're not getting enough and obviously for those of my audience that you know we hear talk about addiction um that the brain chemistry starts to change and the one thing that that i wanted to also share and make a point about you know you spoke about you know the CTA and all the different injuries that they do treat with medications and my understanding and most of the, the doctors that I read especially regarding addiction is that the addiction piece drugs, opioids marijuana, whatever it is that's usually the second it's the secondary issue the first issue it's the mental health. So the mental health is what's going on, the CTE that's happening, what's going on in your life. It's that how you're dealing with pain. So all of those things become primary. And then unfortunately, whether it's somebody else that medicates us or we start to medicate ourselves, um, that's where the major problems come in. And, and the only way to get better is to actually address both of them at the same time. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that happens family doesn't understand and neither does the player is that, you know, when Jeff left football due to injuries, literally um, his, his life was given to somebody else overnight. And literally oh. he had death in the family and it was his. And he really needed time to go in his man cave and grief. And so also if you have injuries and then depression, so Jeff had injuries which created depression, which created financial difficulties, which created a lot of family interference, not necessarily always from my inner family, you know, our little tiny little family within our own house, but all the other families surrounding everybody and the parents and the grandparents, you know, and everybody's got a voice on on what he should be doing next and why can't he just start working on another job right away because he hasn't had time to grieve and he hasn't had time, just like what you were saying, to overcome the emotional depression that came with it. Well, and it, so it, it yes. And, and somebody that's gone through at, at that level, I mean, I've played professionally, but I didn't play for the amount of time or was dedicated to to the physical activities of what they do in the NFL. So to be able to come down, yeah, there, there absolutely is a grieving period when you're done playing, whether you're retiring, whether you're not good enough, or if it's due to injury. And, and people it, don't understand that. Now, Jeff played 18 years of football, but he played seven years professional football. So you have to remember, it didn't just start in the pros. His whole focus and discipline started at Pop Warner. So oh, I took, all of those uh, years, yeah, it's like being in the military. That's what your that's what your mindset is. See, we have to recreate the whole mindset when a, when a player of that length of time comes out, just like we do our veterans. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, like you say, I guess it can go hand in hand with all the training and going to military school and going, you know, all the different stops that you make along the way to be successful and to move up in, in those ranks. It's no different than training to, to go play to make your high school team, your college team, and then hopefully a dream that you've reached the, the NFL. Exactly. We're, we're getting better about the mindset. Tomorrow at 5 o'clock, our NFL uh, PA is putting together a Zoom. I just sent it out to our, to our current players here with our uh, former players in Tampa, and it's called From the Inside Out. Yes, it's okay not to be okay. Um, and, you know, it, it really is based off of Vincent's situation it said, we all know that death is a part of life. Leaning on each other and our experiences can be key in getting help before it's too late. 
and we're trying to get the um, – it's more of a listening session to kind of talk talk things out and to be able to hear from fellow players. Um, so, you know, a lot of times – and all of us do, but men more more so have have a lot of pride. And when, when yeah, something, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, some, we all some of us that. have false pride. Some of us have false pride or too much pride. So yeah, that that's a tough thing that some of us men do fight. I, I would agree with. It's, it's hard a lot of times for our guys to communicate about those. Very, 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 very sensitive things. Well, and, you know what? I think isn't the answer. That's not the answer because most of the time, you know, you're 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 in a in another state. You're not sitting there wanting to go back to your childhood and you know what you did when you were four. Um, you're you're needing help now, but you're really needing help from somebody who has experienced what you're going through. Well, and you know what? Ex- exactly. Brandy, exactly. I want to continue talking about that, but we got to take another quick break. You're listening to The Alan Charles Show live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We will be right back. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of the Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, Hope, and Support for Caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Welcome back to the Alan Charles Show live on the BBM Global Network in TuneIn Radio. And I'm your host, Alan Charles, and we are here with our guest, Brandy Winans. And uh, Brandy, before we went to break, we were talking a little bit about, uh, you know, your work with the NFL Alumni Association and uh, program that they they are they've put together it's okay not to be okay and if that is not one of the biggest statements that i have learned about in recovery and i think that you you don't necessarily have to be in recovery but um i just think that's so wonderful that they're working with uh some of your alumni to to really talk about that um maybe you want to share a little bit more about it yeah, the, the program is designed to assist um, any and all players uh, referencing to dealing with life, you know, just like what Benson went through, like so many of our other ones, like my husband and our family. Um, the purpose is to have a discussion in and around fellow players who have been in, in and may currently be facing difficult situations because we're all facing difficult situations, especially with, with uh, what's happened in our in our. Uh, with COVID and everything. And so right. the hope is to have a discussion, listening session to talk it out, to be able to hear from other fellow players before it's too late. And, um, you know, it's okay. It's from the inside out. It's okay not to be okay. Um, and and to talk, they'll probably bring up Benson's death tomorrow. I'm going to be on the Zoom. It will, um, you know, again, with pride, with people, sometimes we get so put into our man cave or woman cave that we we just we can't even think about coming out. And so we 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 will do things to ourselves. We stay in the depressed state, and then everything else around us starts caving in more. And it, then if you have a, an addiction, um, you know you're you're going to inhale that even more. 
Oh, I couldn't be in more agreement. You said it perfectly. And that's some of the challenges that we face, not just in the NFL or not just with addicts, but in society itself. And I know that those are the things that I went through and why I kept it so close to the vest, because I didn't want to be known as an addict. I didn't want to, I was trying to, to play, well, it was after my baseball career, but I was driving racehorses and, and I had an addiction during that time, as well as I didn't want people to look at me because there's such a negative connotation of being an addict. So you, you don't want to let anybody know what's going on. And then I think an extra piece, an extra layer is it being a guy. I know for I can talk for me. It took me years and years and years to finally open up and let people know what's going on inside of me. My therapist begged me as I was going through my addiction that if I didn't open up and let everybody know what's going on, that I was going to end up dying. And that's where I was headed. And I definitely was. And that's one of the reasons that I ended up publishing my book is because I had to let go of those secrets. And I have to be okay with who I am or I'm not going to have much of a life and, and that's why I think it's so wonderful that you're you're working to help do all these things and I know there's a laundry list of things that uh, you know I want to get to to share with some of the things that you are doing within the Tampa community as well as you know that you're available to, uh, you know to do all other type of work yeah you know I started um, I started working with athletes um, in 2008, and it was after my book came out, and I had done an HBO Real Sports interview, and um, I had tried to get Jeff to write The Flip Side of Glory for eight years, and it was too emotional for him. And um, when we separated and he went back to California, I decided I'm going to go ahead and get this thing. I'd already started it. And then he left, and then I finished it, and I sent him the manuscript because I would not publish anything without him, without his approval. And right. um, and I think I told you the first the first manuscript I sent, I called him to ask ask him what he thought. He said, "Well, I I cried through the first half, but I don't like the second half. I like the." Second half. <laughs> and I said, "Well, you know." Take out what, you know, p- cross through whatever you want is to send it back. And almost the other half of the book was crossed out. <laughs> so, so uh. wrote it. I took about 200 pages out. I needed to vent, too, you know. And, oh, um, yeah. So I, I took I took two hundred about 200 pages out. I think the book ended up about 243 pages or 245 <laughs> And, you know, you're only telling about 10% of your life anyway, but, you, you know, so much keeps happening, the same thing over and over again. It's just repetitious. So um, I, I sent it back to him, and by that time he had calmed down enough because it had been a couple months after, and he was reading it in a different perspective, you know, not that the fact that she's going to bash me, you know. Um, he started reading it understanding that I was talking about the progression of his behavior patterns and that, you know, could we help other people from this? And, and by, by coming clean with it, we could help others. And so he goes, um, I still cried during the first half of the book, but he said the second half, there's still a few chapters I'm not crazy about. But he goes, and he got very emotional, but he said, but if it'll help one family, then let's let's do it. Oh, and, and I'll never forget that because he was finally opening up to what we can do to help others. And we had started a foundation in order to help others. And he was just an amazing, amazing man. You know what? That's incredible. We're going to take a quick break. Friend of the show, three-time World Series champion, Dwight Doc Gooden has a message, and we'll be right back. Hello, this is Doc Gooden of the New York Mets, 1986 World Series champion. You are listening to the Alan Charles Show, live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio with my man, AC. Let's get it. French Rastafarian baker Chef Oug Mat is a fourth generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, 
Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoub.com. That's H U G U E S. Bon appetit and bless up. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nurse. Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Welcome back. This is where you come every Thursday evening to get your life back. We talk about recovery, addiction, and reality. You're listening to the Alan Charles Show live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and I'm your host, Alan Charles. And before we went to break, we are talking with our guest, Brandy Winans, and Brandy was telling us a little bit about the putting the manuscript together for the book and checking with her husband, Jeff Winans, former Buccaneer, amongst other teams. And uh, he finally got to a point where even though he read the book and there were some things that he didn't like, he felt that if this was going to help somebody, that go ahead, go ahead and release that. And, I, and the reason why this kind of jumps out at me is because I had tremendous identification. When I was about to publish my book and tell the world that I was an addict and an alcoholic, that was the last thing that I wanted to do was to tell everybody that. And then somebody said something to me and they said, listen, you wrote the book. It's going to help people. Just put your head up. Be proud that you've come through and go ahead and do this. So when you say that, Brandy, that really jumps out at me. That sounded like he, he crossed a plateau at that point. He did. And um, and it was a it was a it was a really good breakthrough and mm-hmm. several more breakthroughs before um, and he had a lot of he had a lot of um, problems. He had three DUIs out there, he he was starting to have blackouts. I was contributing it to prescription drug addiction. Um, he was, you know, telling me, "Hey, I wasn't, I wasn't that high, you know, I wasn't that much." And I had a blackout, and I ran into something, and I hit this, and I hit that, and he was arrested, and several different times, and and you know, we we um, we decided that's why I'm going to be writing the second book, the flip side, the final chapter, because those things happened after. Uh, 2007, but during the time when I had given him the manuscript and he said yes, in between that time, I saw a young man on uh, HBO Real Sports named Chris Nowinski talking about a book he'd written called Head Games, and he was right. talking about sentences and signs, and Jeff was already out in Cali, and I was here, and every one of them was Jeff, and a, 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 a light bulb went off. I got sick to my stomach, and I said... Could prescription drug addiction be the demise of my marriage with physical disabilities, or could it be something else? And God just, the Spirit just came all over me, and it was like, I have to find out. And I Googled this young man. I found him on a little medical uh, uh, company that he worked for because I couldn't get through HBO. Within 24 hours, he he emailed me back. We had a conference call uh, the following morning, and that morning I'm watching on GMA at one of the morning shows, uh, Joe Dicka and and Joe Delam Joe D uh, Mike Dicka and Joe D Joe Delamular talking about the congressional hearings, ability and pensions, right. and I 
15 years to get my husband's disability, which is part of the book. And Mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden, Chris goes, you have to come. I told him about the manuscript and what goes on behind closed doors. He said, I'm going to put you in touch with Linda Sanchez's office. Bam, bam, bam. The next thing I know, I'm in Washington, D.C. at the DICA press conference and going on to the congressional hearings. When I walked into the DICA press conference was my... My, my biggest aha moment because I walked in there and there were all these other families going through what we'd been going through. And oh, wow. All of us thought we were the only ones. Well, <laughs> that, like, that, that must have been oh some sense God. of relief that you walk in there and go, oh, my God, they, they know exactly how I feel. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Oh, my God, that's amazing. Um, God, you've become such an advocate. And, uh, you know, why don't we talk a little bit more? We have a few minutes left in this segment about your husband. Maybe when you guys met, I I feel like I know him now. There's some of the pictures. He has such an infectious smile. Um, And uh, tell us a little bit about what Jeff was like before all of this happened. Uh, you, you hit the nail on the head. He, um, I called him my Greek god. He was six foot six, <laughs> uh, lineman. He started out playing defense at, was at USC, then um, with Buffalo and uh, Tampa, or the Raiders twice, and then Tampa, which is where he and I met. And I had just moved back from California. I was going through a divorce. He was going through a divorce. And both of us had short-lived divor- marriages of like two years each. Okay. And um, I had just opened up a boutique, and then that marriage ended up costing me my boutique, and so I went to work in the media with a talk radio station here that we had just had just been formed. And um, I uh, had a little girl in the complex that of the apartment building I was renting in Clearwater, and she needed a place to to hang out, and so I said, "Well, I'll rent you my other bedroom." And there was a place called Molly McGuire's in oh, yeah. uh, in Clearwater, and. Uh-huh. Um, Molly McGuire's, the McGuire brothers had come down from Buffalo, friends of Jeff. He had had a part, partnership in a bar up there, and uh, I, she kept bugging me to go. And one night I said, okay, and it was more of a teeny, you know, it was younger. And the drinking age had been dropped to 18 here, and she was 18. Okay. Up, um, going, and there he was, and he was sitting all by himself because I made her go about 8.30 at night. <laughs> me <laughs> and we sat and talked and I don't even think I, I was just you know he talked and I just stared at him you know? <laughs> I, was, I was starstruck not not because he was a player I was just there was so much chemistry there that it scared the crap out of me and then he asked me out and I said well maybe maybe I'll go out with you sometime and as soon as I said that it was like women didn't blow him off you know it was like he goes, well, uh, maybe I'll see you around sometime. And he goes down to the other end of the bar. And I found myself going there a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so we cool. Were, what a, yeah, we were friends for about six months. And then we had a car accident together. And then that was, we all, we had such chemistry. It was just, it was it was crazy. But he, he was my Greek god. And he was, he was just, we had so much in common. He was an animal lover. Um he was funny. He had a very dry sense of humor. But if you didn't understand that, you, people could feel hurtful around him. <laughs> <laughs> so he was a little tough, but he, he knew how to give it. And I guess apparently he knew how to take it, too. Yeah, my, he, he came back from Oakland. <laughs> my girlfriend came over. and We were sitting on the couch talking, and he's watching football and and, and or basketball, I guess it was. And finally, he just looked over at Lene. My friends had been waiting to meet this guy because he was like my ghost boyfriend, right? And right. So he looks over. He goes, Lene, and she goes, Yes, Jeff. And he goes, Never freaking shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we're going to take our last break of the evening, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about you, Brandy, and uh, share a little bit about what else you do. So, you're listening to The Alan Charles Show live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We will be right back. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knutson's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. 
The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story, is a triumphant achievement, and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Master of words, powerful player. What life-changing words can Dr. Janet Smith-Warfield pull out of her magical toolbox that just might mysteriously open a door you never knew was there? A door to free yourself from fear forever. Transform your rage into right action. Release your guilt. Position you into a life of freedom, purpose, passion, power, and peace. All quite suddenly, unexpectedly, and almost miraculously with no effort on your part. Join Dr. Janet every Monday at noon Eastern on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on the BBM Global Network as she and her guests show you how words map our experiences immersing you in a sound bath that relaxes your muscles, opens your mind, and supports you in co-creating your extraordinary life. Welcome back to the Alan Charles Show, live on the BBM Global Network and Tuna Radio, and I'm your host, Alan Charles, and oh, it has been wonderful to have my guest on tonight, Brandy Winans, and we just finished up before break, you were telling us a little bit about Jeff and kind of your love story and uh, your, your meeting at the bar down in, uh, I think it was Clearwater or St. Petersburg, but uh, why don't you share a little bit more about that and then tell us a little bit about what you're doing, Brandy. Thanks. Uh, you know, he was just a wonderful man, and um, we had a very beautiful relationship and marriage. We um, we ended up being together o- over thirty some years, and uh, we have a beautiful son, Travis, and I have oh. a beautiful granddaughter and a a daughter in law that is so gorgeous. I couldn't have handpicked her myself. I, I'm very very blessed there. Um, you know, I started working with families and players only because I had ended up going back to do an HBO special, and um, uh, I started getting calls from people all over the country saying, hey, you're telling my story. I need somebody to talk to. You know, oh, we don't wow. always ask things. Um, I'm, I'm our chapter engagement coordinator for our NFL alumni Tampa Bay chapter and, and treasurer, and um, I'm just starting a new project right now called the uh, Florida Rising Stars with um, uh, Wayne Hogan, who was an executive director and uh, Flo- uh, with the uh, Florida Sports Hall of Fame, and he worked with Bobby Bowden for years. So we have we're coming in, and it's a new project that that I'm involved with. You can you can reach me very easily at uh, Brandy at Rising Star Florida Rising Stars dot com. You okay. can reach me at Brandy Winans. You can just Google me, and you will pick me up at brandy.winans at nflalumni.org, live speaker at aol.com. You can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, if you want to Google me, you can find some of the other interviews that I've done and some of the advocacy that I've done throughout um, throughout my relationship with the NFL that started with Jeff in 1979. I've fought a lot for pensions and disabilities as well, but uh, I, my, my passion are uh, working with families and players and, and working with teens and young adults because I've been a troubled kid. Wow. Um, you know what? And you got through that. There's quite a bit of stuff, in, and there's so much. I want to encourage people to get the book, The Flip Side of Glory by Brandy Winans, and it really gives you a look into uh, the NFL that you really don't get to look at. It, I mean, it gives you an understanding of some of the issues 
it's it's just incredible. Um, and and you have a second book that uh, you're gonna gonna finish with, right? Yes, uh, the flip side of glory, the final chapter. And uh, I want to thank you so much for sending me your book, Walking Out the Other Side, because if someone has not read that, they definitely need to as well, because we're all here to help each other. And yes. um, you go nowhere by accident. And my slogan, as I've said it to you, it's through our past and only through our past that we can gain our future. Uh, can't say that is a wonderful saying and and i appreciate you mentioning my book so thank you yeah we're here to help and you know you're welcome back on the show anytime if there's any anything i can ever do to help you 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 have a friend for life uh you're you're just such an interesting person um as you mentioned i would definitely suggest that you google uh brandy winans w-i-n-a-n-s uh there are so many different things out there from some of the different presentations that you've given uh numerous articles and and everything there's so much information and so much different information you've been such an influence on being an advocate for players' health and safety, both for all the work that you did to, to, to help Jeff and to go through what he went through, and then obviously everything afterwards. That, uh, you're incredible, Brandy. Thank you so much for, for everything that you're doing. Thank you. If you want to find my book, you just Google me on Amazon. I'm there. Well, thank you, Brandy. We'll see you next week. Listen. You're listening to The Alan Charles Show, and no matter what the situation, life can get tough. Sometimes you hear people say, you only live once. I believe that's incorrect. You only die once. Learn to live your life every day. We'll see you next Thursday. You're listening to The Alan Charles Show live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Good night. He used to be an addict, now he's substance-free, telling all about his crazy journey. This has been the Alan Charles Show with your host, Alan Charles. The views and opinions expressed by Alan Charles and guests on the Alan Charles Show are solely their own and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the BBM Global Network or its affiliates. Even though Alan Charles thinks he's an expert at life, we urge you to think about acting on his advice. Even though he has been in recovery for 10-plus years, he is a bit of a mashugana. He's given us the real story. The Alan Charles Show. Ups and downs, losing jobs and the glory. The Alan Charles Show. He helps others avoid that purgatory. The Alan Charles Show. been listening to the bbm global network the ideas views and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas views and opinions of the bbm global network company